Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Quake World Championships 2017, presented by AMD. I'm never going to get tired of saying those magical words. It is now time for our semi-final. Let's meet our two first semi-finalists. It's Claus from Belarus and Kula from Russia. We'll start with Claus first. Um, I guess the first thing to ask you is, do you see this man as a bit of an idol? Is he, is he a legend to you? Are you overawed in any way by him, or are you just going to play your game? Uh, of course, he's legend, but uh, as an enemy, I'll take him like anyone else. So that will make me more confident, and I won't be nervous. And okay, good. I like that. Strong and confident. Have you had any advice from Cypher? Has he spoken to you in the last two days? No, we are not talking for many years already. Really? Not talking? Why? We had some conflict, personal one, so... Okay, all right. I'm just going to leave that there and wish you good luck for the semi-final. Um, Caller. You've got a player, player from Belarus, and I know that you've had some issues with players from Belarus in the past. Some tough matches. Not really. I love it, okay. So no problem here, young, young guy, upstart, you, no worried? No, only friendship and fun. Okay, I like that. We've got some fun and friendship here on the stage. I have a, a feeling, though, that war is about to break out between these two. Ladies and gents, claws and cooler are going to be your first semi-final for a place at QuakeCon 2017 and the Quake World Championship. Let's catch up with the men at the desk with DJ Wheat. Hi, and uh, yeah, there's a lot to talk about here. Uh, you know, not only do we have Cooler, uh, sort of a, a longtime Quake veteran, but we have Claus, definitely classifies as a, a member of the New Blood. And, uh, you know, we were taking a look at some of his match uh, history leading up to this, and, and I feel like Claus has certainly turned something on since the qualifiers up until now. Um, I, I, I want to hear from you guys about this matchup. Let's take a look at their two cards as well. This is Cooler versus Claus, the first semifinal. Of course, the winner's moving on to the finals tomorrow uh, here at the Quake World Championships, and we'll also have the third, fourth place match. But this is a very important matchup because everyone wants to be there. Claus, also a member of 2Z, who's in the finals as well. Uh, but uh, I'm going to go to you first. Look, what do you What do you think about these two? Well, as you can see, uh, Claus is uh, only 19 years of age, going against a seniority of 31 on Cooler. But to give you a bit of insight into the character of him, you could say he's a little bit cocky and confident. He does say repeatedly that he hits harder than Tox uh, <laughs> with the LG. Uh, but he's he's confident in his own game, and he does like to have fun with it at the same time. He's That's not good. someone who takes himself too seriously. Uh, and you should, honestly, you should see him have just a lot of fun in this matchup. Yeah, I, I really like how we have the more or less the up and coming new blood, as you mentioned, against the, the established legend. And it's kind of interesting to point out his age, 19. I believe uh, Cooler was probably about that age the last time I think he was number one in the world. So this, if he were to somehow pull this off and win a QuakeCon, I, uh, we were just talking about how that is the largest in terms of gap of somebody you know, winning way back when and, and over 10 years later winning it again. That, uh, it says a lot about Cooler, I'll just tell you that. Um, a heck of a player, and but look out, this, this, this kid's coming for him. Yeah, it also marks the first time in 10 years that someone other than Rafa or Cypher will That's win crazy, Quake right? Con. And the last time in 2007 was Toxic in Quake 4. And uh, before we talk a little bit more about this match, of course, the Quake World Championships powered by AMD. Just want to give a shout out to AMD for providing all of our tournament machines, some of the machines that you're gaming on over in the Expo area as well. And uh, thank you, AMD, for supporting not only Quake Champions, but the Quake World Championship. $1 million is on the line, and tomorrow we get to award all these fine folks some amazing, amazing money. And uh, thank you again for your support. Now, uh, as we enter into this first semifinal, do you guys want to make some predictions here? Anyone uh, oh, comfortable enough to do that? Well, <sighs> you know, I've been hearing behind the scenes a lot of people are seeing Claws making it to the finals, but I've predicted in a galaxy long ago that... Cooler was going to be making it and going all the way. And I did say that he would go all the way against Avec, of all people, who, of course, has just been taken out by right. Vru very mm. recently. But I can't go back on myself. I'm going to call it. Cooler is going to be in the final. Uh, it's really tough to call for me, uh, you know, the up-and-comer. Tournament experience is really important in my view, so I think I'm going to go with the, the known, more known quantity here with Cooler. Uh, not taking anything right. away from the other player, but I think tournament experience is important. Uh, either way, I think we win in this matchup, uh, regardless of who wins, and we are about to go live, so let's shoot it over to our casters and get into the action. Thank you very much. And indeed, we are into the action here. Claws versus Cooler. What a matchup we have here on our hands at a 6 What a pleasure to cast. 
yeah, absolutely thrilled to see Claws make it this far, particularly against someone of Lakula's quality. And I'm intrigued to see how Lakula can react and adapt, as we spoke about earlier, to Claws' impeccable aim. So a few exchanges here between the players, but nothing really substantial. So lag for Kula there in Claws on the Knicks, waiting for the heavy armor. Here comes some pressure from Kula. See if he's able to get some damage off on to the Claws, who is waiting for that heavy, able to pick it up. But how much damage will he sustain as he tries to go for the exit? Oh, Kula actually thinking to perhaps go for the drop there, but he will be pushed back by the LG work of Claws. So both being extremely greedy in his opening exchanges. Claws unwilling to pop that Ghost Walk despite being very, very low, and Kula pushing in and not hitting any rails and really costing him, but able to fall back on the Mega, so it's not too bad just yet. How do you feel about the first choices here? Uh, champion versus Champion, Solag and Nyx. We'll have to hold that fort here. Two close range rails there. The Ghost Walk popped. He knows that he's done so much damage. There's the finish with the LG out of the Ghost Walk. Kula, pretty unlucky start for him, but Claws, where will he take this momentum now? Another engagement here. Looks like Kula really wants to bring the pressure straight back to Claws. Claws was pretty healthy after the last engagement, but Kula down to one HP, finishing off Claws with that machine gun. And now it's uh, down to Anarchy. I, uh, I'm pretty intrigued because I, sp I said earlier that Sorlak was pretty much a mandatory pick and we haven't got it from Claws' side. Instead, he's gone for a full aggression approach with the Anarchy, the Slash, and the Nyx, whereby Claws can utilize that speed to really capitalize on um, capitalize really on, on the speed element that he has on all three of the champions. And right now I like how Kula is playing this. He's just looking for some information. He's got a decent stack, looking to perhaps catch Claws, ready to try to go for one of these guns, the lightning gun in particular in that instance. But still no information right now from Kula. It's hard to really deduce what's happening. And this is what we've seen a lot from Kula, as opposed to most other players in this tournament so far, is really using the sound clues and waiting for that information because one of Kula's strengths is that he adapts around what the player is doing and he's unwilling to take those risks, particularly only with now two champions remaining. He must know what Claus is doing and where he is before he decides what move he's going to make. And it's it's extremely smart but difficult way to play as well. And looks like he's going to catch Claws close range. The Anarchy, the Ghost Wall popped here as he goes for the pursuit here. Good damage, Anarchy pinned in the corner there. And that's the finish there from the LG of Kula. Excellent work. And that patience absolutely paying off. Exactly, just patience. And that's exactly what it was. Claws playing into his hands and following up perfectly there, diving down with the Ghost Walk and using it semi aggressively. Kula now just using this patience to ex extreme effect. I mean, he's in a position right now where he's a champion ahead of Claws. He doesn't have to make any rash moves. Once again, waiting for those sound cues. He knows that Claws is above him, just waiting for a perfect engagement. And here it is, sliding into the LG. That's not what you want in Claws' position, as Kula is able to get superior positioning towards the heavy, but still Claws wants to try to challenge, perhaps, looking to take the rail engagement against Kula. That might not be so wise, though, and he will back away and not receive any rails, which is very good news for him. He's not the healthiest. That's a great wow. shot there from Kula. As Claws passes the pillar's position. And the one thing that Kula is doing very well since Claws has been on the Anarchy and now the Slash is that both of these champions need to take routes around the map because their speed is based on having open what well, kind of rotations, if you will. And Kula is setting up traps based on where they are going and it's working out absolutely ideally. Just catching them in the corridors. That's exactly what happened to the second kill on the Anarchy. And that's what's happened twice now. Catching the Slash, going around those corners where it needs to slide. Love how smart Kula's playing it, but also very nice shots connected so far. We'll whiff the second rail there, but the first one will give him an advantage, and he knows it. The problem really is trying to close down uh, Claws, but that's a really nice poke from Claws, just catching Kula off guard and going for the aggressive play. Claws, what can he find here? Ghost Walk is forced to be popped by Kula now as he goes back towards the LG. And this is a dangerous 30 seconds. Last 30 seconds of the map, and there is no Ghost Walk remaining. Another good rail connected here, but the Mega is there to keep Kula in a decent stead. He's got a light armor there as well, but he's also got a Claws bearing down upon him, drilling away with that lightning gun. And Kula's just having to try to evade here, trying to use that champion advantage. Ten seconds to go right now as Claws tries desperately to find him, going for the slide. Can't see where Kula is. Kula knows exactly where he is, though, just staying still, using the sound cues to inform his decisions. And that's an excellent series of plays there from Kula to put him ahead early in this, in, in this series. Exactly. Really great play. Playing, it looks passive, but it's also 
It's also quite aggressive because you're playing out in the open and you're quite vulnerable because if you make a mistake, then Claws can really pounce upon you. But he, he plays attention, knows where Claws is going and really blocks those roots, doing massive amount of damage. And that limits Claws' potential to go on the aggressive. Yeah, it's, it's really cool to see how Cool is playing positionally so far. It's, it's been beautiful. Whenever he's in a spot with that Ghost Walk Up, he's got a lot of proficiency here. But there it is. It's going to be Claws being forced to pop the Ghost Walk. And that's great news here for Kula because he's got the spit. He's going to land that spit, I think, as well. And this is a very nice. dead Claws there. That Nyx has been sent back to the bench as it now is up to Anarchy here for Claws. And Kula looks strong right now. Looks really, really strong here. He has Claws' number at the moment. The double back there was just completely unexpected on Claws' side. And it's just Kula playing smart at the moment. Really enjoyable to watch. Taking his time. And it's an interesting difference of styles, considering that, as you mentioned, Claw's opting to go with these champions with very fast movement options. And there it is, Kula once again catching Claws with the Anarchy. Speed is not your friend at this point. That is amazing how Kula is playing against that, because so many players in this current meta are trying to rely on very speedy play styles, and Kula's just laying traps and waiting. Yep. And this, is the, this, in my opinion, is one of the most effective ways. Uh, speaking to Kula before, he says the Anarchy is useless. And if you can play like this, if you can use the sound cues and set up traps just like he's doing here, doesn't work at that time. But if you can set up traps just like he's doing around these corners with the where these smaller, weaker champions are running into you, then yes, of course they're going to be weak. And of course they're not going to be valuable to you. And it's a very difficult play style to play. Yeah, there's uh, quite a few players, well, very few players at the top level that can really make the perfect decision making with the speed because it's quite the burden sometimes. But we'll see Claws making a lot of noise here. As per usual, that seems to be the case that Kula's much more informed in this in these engagements. Yeah, Slash is one of these champions where you'd have to make a little bit of noise and move around the map fast to make most amount of use of what, what she offers, which is that, cr that crouch slide. Um, yes, and was Okay, a little bit of a thing going on. But whilst you can catch them off guard, you're also quite vulnerable if you do not know exactly where your opponent is. And that's why Cool is playing extremely quietly around the map. Nice rails coming out from Claws and forcing that Ghost Walkout, which gives him the opportunity to go aggressive here. And nice respect from Cooler there just to pop that, that Ghost Walk after the first rail received. And the one thing that Claws knows now is that Cooler needs these time shards. That's why he was he's going to be trying to hunt for Cooler where he needs to go. I feel like Claw's in a position where he's really going to be pushed to have to out-damage Kula, out-aim him in a lot of these engagements, because Kula is really playing a very smart game. And he I has the information advantage almost all of the time. And I think in this iteration of the game, we've seen that Kula actually has one of the strongest aims, not something we could say in the past. And that's what makes him very scary in this event as well. It's, it's quite under-respected, as we see here with the LGs coming out from both sides, but this time Claw's. The uh, self-anointed best LG in the world, winning that that exchange. Yeah, very confident with the LG. Kula perhaps uh, misinterpreting the engagement there, and Claws is back in this one now as things are tied up. Onto the Ranger is Kula at the moment. As you see Claws just looking for an opportunity to get some of that vertical lightning gun damage. We saw Razy very good at that in the previous matches where he was playing. So close to defeating Rafa, but unable to in the end. Claws now for that next opportunity. But again, making all the noise. Kula looking for that moment to strike here. The LG came out, dropping for the heavy. Good damage done onto Claws' slash. Claws has to be really careful because Kula is in a good position on the stack. And if Kula looks to actually get a bit of extra chip damage here, he might decide to just commit into the fight. He has used Dyro, but as we see, it's only got another eight seconds to go. And the items are split by 15 seconds, which is pretty much a perfect split um, to, in order for him to fall back on one item when he's going aggressive. Here he goes, trying to get himself in there, sliding into the pillars. And it's going to be cooler to catch Claws. Perhaps an aggression that Claws will regret, as Kula will be taking the second round against Claws on Blood Covenant. It's a great start for him so far. It looks, it looks comfortable for Kula. And from my perspective, I think we need to see Claws falling back a little bit more, playing safer, as we saw Voodoo against Avec when Avec was going on the aggressive. Yes, Kula's not pushing out, but he's, he's reading Claws particularly effectively. So Claws needs to try and slow the game down. We've seen that work with his rail game at the moment. He's, he's winning those rail battles, and I think that's where he has a lifeline in this map, being two rounds down already. It does definitely seem like Kula has the sort of master key to unlock the style 
that Claus is bringing to the table. And Claus, we'll have to see if he's able to force an adaptation as the series progresses here. I think that is a must if he wants to defeat Cooler. One of the most experienced players that there is in Quake. Nice. And the engagement happens here. We've got the Mega there ready for the Sorlag of Cooler. He's in a great position. Claus almost down. And Cooler knows it. He's hot on the heels of Claus right now. But Claus, of course, very quick with this slash. Nice rail there. Able to steal away that heavy as well. Good, really good work coming in from Claus to stay alive in this position. He might even be able to put the pressure straight back onto Kula. He knows Kula has to be low here. And here he goes, straight up the jump pad. But where on earth has Kula gone? Oh, that is a critical rail that is going to halt that aggression right in the track. But just so far in the first minute, Claus hitting three or four very, very important rails. And this is what we were just talking about. Another one right coming up there. It is the rail game that's going to get Claus back into this because those close corridor fights that normally work in Cooler's favor. So try and keep him at bay and play a little bit slower. Quite a few close calls so far as Claus is able to stack up. Finds Cooler, catches him off guard. That's a great string of LG damage, but you can't get too much more than that. And indeed, Cooler with a nice defensive acid spit, able to really hurt Claus. Claus sent back to just stacking up here, trying to get what items he can before he can really press the aggression once more. So. Resetting the situation effectively with that acid spit. Yeah, um, it was pretty lucky. It didn't look like it, it did hit, but the one kind of particle must clip, and it does tick for obviously 10 per, per second or so. And against the Nyx, that is quite a considerable amount of stacks. So it doesn't forget. Claus wants to end it right here, just diving straight into Cooler. Good LG damage, but again, Slash so squishy, has to be careful. These close range rockets, great vertical shot with the rail. Looking to finish Cooler off. Can he find the pursuit here? Looks like he wants to take it slow. And again, you've mentioned, and we've talked about how this game mode is not really sort of like the old classic duel. It's not much about the war of attrition. We have to hold that fort here because it looks like Claus has an opportunity to perhaps force the issue, and he will do just that, taking down Cooler's sore lag and now putting himself a champion ahead. Exactly, and you were just talking about the war of attrition, but the one thing about the sore lag is clearly being a tankier champion, it relies on a large stack. And when you do get him low, it is quite a long time to get back up, particularly if you don't have the Mega at your disposal. And that's why Claus knew he had an opening to push him while the Sorlag didn't have enough time to collect the necessary health bubbles. So a great read and a perfect push in at the right time. Stop watch. So how long can Claus hang on to this slash of his? So far, he's been very deft defined with the speed and the very good aim. Just making sure that if Cooler's ever to try to pursue, he's always doing so much damage, it really makes a hard, or really brings about a hard decision for Cooler whether or not he should yes. go and pursue it. An like aggressive this. Ghost Walk here, straight onto Cooler. Oh, great stuff there with the Rockets. So much damage done. Forcing the Ghost Walk from Cooler. Can Claus catch the rail shot he needs to finish off Cooler? There he goes straight towards the telly. It's the Rockets to do it. And Claus will survive with 27 health. Another champion up. This is a very desperate situation for Cooler. Call off the spawn. The LG goes to work. And that's Claus with another frag and the round. Whoa, that was intense. Kula completely misreading Claus's, uh, Claus's approach there. He believed that Claus was going to drop down through the LG channel to try and call cop, uh, to catch Kula on the back end, but instead doubling back and Kula running right straight back into that rocket. Some new rounds. Claus is uh, one round down at the moment. Of course, Kula a quick two. So it's good to see that Claus is able to respond here and prevent Cooler from just reaching a quick uh, victory here on Blood Covenant, fighting back. And that's, you know, some of the adaptation we were talking about. Yeah, I felt Claw's approach that game a lot better, utilizing the rail for great effectiveness and not taking fights that were not in the favor. He waited patiently, patiently, patiently until the openings came. And when the first frag came around three minutes, that was enough. But this time, Cooler with the rail using it to great effectiveness, while Claw, uh, Claws didn't have an approach. Yeah, that's a really big problem for Claws there. And perhaps being a little bit too. A greedy, we saw him trying to get chip damage with the Zoom's heavy machine gun, and it was very likely his opponent had the rail there, so uh, perhaps a misread, or maybe a lapse of focus, but we'll see what happens. Oh, connecting all the acid spit. I think two or three globs of it hit Anarchy straight in the face there. That's an easy second kill coming in the way of Cooler. And of course, he is in the lead on the rounds. He just needs one more and one more champion kill to secure a victory here on Blood Covenant. Oh. Great rail up the jump pad. Claws is in a lot of problems at the moment. A nice. LG damage put on top of the bridge as Cooler is waiting for this next pickup. And he must be feeling like he can close down this frag soon. He is, and the spit's back up now, so he can be a little bit more confident. Um, I just expect him to play like he did in the first round. Playing the corners, waiting for the slash to come into him. He just heard 
Slash going for the rail, so he needs to be a little bit more careful playing out in the open. This is why he's camping here. Oh, that's a great catch, exactly as you described. And there's no escape wow. from the damage potential from Claus's LG. <laughs> Truly is remarkable. A little bit of rush and buttering coming out of Kula. That's, that's highly frustrating because you make all the right decisions, you set a trap, and then monstrous LG coming out the Belarusian to just absolutely rape the Sorlag. What do you think Kula was saying there? I, I can't repeat. Oh, fiddlesticks. The, yeah, the Russian version of that. Let's go Perhaps. with that. Yeah, let's do that. All right, well, we have Claus here. Oh, going for a rush down here. That's beautiful movement there from Claus. Has to connect that legendary LG. He's been talking up so much this tournament. He is going to be battered back, though, by the defensive play of Kula. Really nicely done there. And this time, yeah, Kula holding his own and forcing Claus this time to retreat. Never mind, back up to the full starting stack at least, and looking healthy. Uh, he knows that Kula doesn't have a rail, so that is a priority to defend as well. As we mentioned before, the Ghost Walk was popped, and so time bubbles are also a priority. Going for those very, very hard rails is cause. Unable to find anything just yet. Kula is playing remarkably well in the down position. This is something he was very well known for in all the previous iterations of Quake Jewel in which he competed, able to just seemingly disappear from the map when he needs to. Exactly, and having a champion advantage, even though there's two minutes left, I wouldn't expect Kula to make an aggressive move from now on. It's going to be him waiting for Claws to do it, having retired damage, and if it's a full-on mistake, then he, can re then he can push in. And I suppose that's why Claws is really trying to go aggressive here. That's a great catch for the LG Kula. And you immediately that there's no way he could have won that fight. Pops the Ghost Walk. That's the chance here for Claws. Oh, push down the Ooh, rail curve lucky. towards the shots. That's a really big problem for Claws. That's an opportunity perhaps missed, but it might open itself up once more. Opportunity strikes. He needs to be very careful here. Only 75. That's fine now, but there's no need to take a risk. There's still a minute and a half left, and you only need one kill, not two, to at least tie it up. So. Good, good play, playing carefully. That's perfect. Cooler is so weak at the moment. Surely he can't hang on. He's going to have his Ghost Walk up again now, which will be excellent. But I think a, a single rail might be almost just enough to put him in a position where he will just die. Yeah, it's the point of no return for Cooler. There is not an aggressive move in his mind. It's just going to be playing defensive, keeping away, staying at corners, waiting for those sound cues, and trying not to pop the Ghost Walk unless it's the last resort. You want to hold on to that until the very last second. I love the movement here from Claws. He's going to find Kula, and that's it. The Ghost Walk's gone, but that's, that's a really a good connection. He did so much damage to Kula. Oh, oh, Claws completely lost track of Kula, and that is why Ghost Walk is so horrible to play against sometimes. Beautiful composure there from Kula. That is what we know him to have, we'll know him to play. He just disappears, super composed, very focused, even though he's in these very scary situations where he could die uh, with a very aggressive Claws constantly rushing him down. Always looks calm. Massively impressed from Claws, and I think the way I would describe the, at least the ending to that game is just inexperience. Um, you don't have a stack, you'll massively damage yourself. Yes, you did a little bit of damage to Kula, and yes, he has been running away from you, but the opportunity presented itself where you were out of position, you didn't know where he was. It was a dramatic risk trying to jump for that red armor, and it cost him the game, essentially. And this really is the big storyline between the two players. Of course, Kula, again, one of the most ex uh, experienced players that we've ever had yeah. in, in Quake. And we can and see that shining through in every single decision he makes, that at every turn, he's always assessing what is my opponent doing and thinking and having that cognitive state to say, it doesn't matter about the items, it doesn't matter about the map. I need to know what my opponent is thinking. I need to get, it's almost like he's inside your head. He's like clawing at your brain, thinking, what is, what is your decision making? And how can I abuse that? Um, it's, it's a way of playing that I personally could never do, and I think many, many <laughs> players can never do. You, you mean do. the intelligent play style? Yeah, I'm just, I'm just brute. Um, brute force. But it's what you need to do, particularly against those very quick, aggressive champions, because they will be on top of you if you're not aware of exactly what you're, dead, you're doing, particularly the slashes and, and the anarchies of the world, in that it changes the whole dynamic of Quake as you know it, particularly coming from Quake live in the previous iterations of Quake, that normal decision-making and movement and kind of combat zones of Jewel is transformed because they break the mold. They can be on you in, in seconds that you're not expecting, so you have to be continually aware of their positioning and what they want to achieve. And if you can do that, then you're never caught off guard. And that always keeps you on even footing. This is, uh, this is amazing for Claus as well, to be in the position that he's, he knows he's up against a, a player that is an absolute legend. 
has the most experience perhaps of anyone here at this, at this tournament in the very top level of competition. He, he's an underdog. Uh, he is in, in that sense, and uh, he's, he's a newcomer, so it's a, it's a really good experience in that sense. That I think that alleviates some level of pressure from him, but at, of course at the same time, he's going to be doing his best, his utmost, to try to find a way to defeat Cooler. And obviously Cooler, as we've been talking about, he's the, the player that can not only be able to read your, uh, read how you like to make decisions, but also read what your strengths of your lineup is going to be. And he's going sure. to try to play against that, not allow you to reach that comfort zone. So it's, exactly. it's a really interesting battle as we move on to Corrupted Keep. And as we cast it clause earlier, I think he's got to this stage of the tournament relying heavily on his natural skills. And for him to become a champion, which I definitely think it has it in him, he needs to take the next step. He needs to then think slightly more outside the box and begin to adapt his play slightly. He can't just brute force his way through Kula. Um, but if he does take that necessary adaptation, become slightly more careful and aware of the situation, then definitely Claus can take the second map. Well, it remains to be seen. The players have had some time to compose themselves into the beginning of this next map. Of course, Cooler is up one, just having won the Blood Covenant that we opened up with here. And we're already going to see uh, an exchange here as both players can pick up those weapons they initially want. Both players also going with the sword like here. Really good engagement here for Cooler. Perfect LG coming out from him. Now, as we see, Claws in a really weak spot. Cooler not pushing the issue here. He's allowing Claws to make a decision. And it's a decision that's going to cost him, surely. Cooler himself getting quite low. The LG, what? what on earth was that? Cooler surely had every single advantage, but Claws seemingly out of nowhere able to win that fight. Claws had no right to win that fight. Once again, Cooler making the right decision. Claws caught unaware going up a jump pad and somehow wins a battle, pushing in aggressively here. And oh. this time, Cooler. Uh, but that is twice in this game already. Claws has been caught unawares by Cooler's play. Um, he just, again, he just needs to think slightly more about what Cooler wants to achieve rather than what every other jeweler in the world would traditionally do. It's that next level up. It's always very difficult to connect the air rockets reliably in, in this uh, in, in Quake Champions. Yeah, it's still getting used to it, but I have to hold that fort here. We have the LG coming to play once again by the Light's armor, and Cooler again getting uh, four back there, actually, on 12 health. That's really wow. problematic, and that's a beautiful catch there from Claws. Again, just using the speed, a very optimal route there, catching Cooler off guard. He knew that he had to go for the HP. He knew that Cooler was so weak. And what now he's got the pressure on as Cooler goes for the lightning gun. Claws, though, can't withstand the damage output of uh, Cooler's Galena. Bit, di bit disrespectful of Cooler's aim there, um, particularly off the spawn and picking up the lightning gun already. Another push here with the Galena on that LG, and we can see that there's problems here for Claws. He doesn't really have all the weapons that he needs just yet. However, Cooler not really in a position to push the issue. Has to fall back onto the bigger yeah, items, of which... They won't be spawning for another 10 seconds or so. So some decisions are there to be made here for how Cooler would like to position himself. And he's gone very passive, actually. And we'll see that. Here comes the Anarchy. The Claws is going to just drop on top of him with nice. the Rockets. That's beautiful work there for Claws. Very quick very nice. first round between these two. What I like about that round is Claws taking the initiative. Yes, he got caught unaware the first, the first couple of frags. Um, but then he moved him in the Ghost Walk on the Knicks. Taking it, I really like it when players utilize the ability in that fashion. Uh, and then with the Anarchy, he knew Cooler only had the, the Lightning Gun, which is a standard steady rate of output of damage. And so Claus had the opportunity to push him with a shotgun and back off with his own ability to heal up, knowing he was relatively safe. That's a good amount of damage from Nails there from Claus. That's going to put Cooler on the back foot. Although Claus dropping into the LG definitely gives Cooler a really nice damage output. But it's Claus on the pursuit here to get the advantage once again. Cooler just desperately trying to pick up HP at the moment. He's got no armor to his name. Claus knows he's got an opportunity here to capitalize into the first kill of this round. But once again, Cooler just staying alive, but he can't keep withstanding. Uh, sustaining this damage here. The LG just keeps going, coming from Claws. <laughs> he keeps pushing the issue. And they're still just, Cooler just running around here with a sword, like eventually goes down. And this map is far more suited to the way Claws like to play. I, am, I was about to talk about at the start, is I prefer the sword like pick over the slash now. Um, but there isn't that, those cheeky corners for Cooler to try and trap Claws. He can get on top of Cooler and pressurize him with that. What have you just seen? Unbearable lightning gun aim. 
Falls in a good position here, but that changes things somewhat. Gets caught by some algae, though. Of course, being Sawlag like, still has quite the stack to fight with. He's going to push this. That's a really nice wow. string of LG there. Just in the nick of time there to catch that heavy pickup as well. And looking to get a nice one off the spawn. Galina using the totem to heal up here, but it won't be enough. Just no items there for Kulin. That's a really fast round. Really fast. One minute 27. Um, two. Well, just great, great pressure from Claws and slightly greedy on the items. There was no need for Cooler to be there with the Nyx on the red. He had no right to be there and Claws made him pay. Just now it's Cooler's turn. He is being outmatched on these one-on-one -on -one fights uh, and Claws is being able to get on top of him. So Cooler just needs to, I think, move away from the Lightning Gun. Here it is, he's trying to push the fight up into Kula, who's stuck by this lightning gun. He's got to just do as much damage phys as physically possible. He might not win the fight, but he will, with a mere 29 health remaining. What can Claus do off the spawn, though? He is on that Nyx now, as Kula is forced to go stacking up. And Claus is going to realize that there is a window of time where he's able to pick up items that he needs, where, you know, where Kula's not in a position to want to take a fight. He's still low, he's still recovering his, his uh, cool down there to get the acid spit up, so Kula out of the uh, action there for a good 20 seconds or so, but he's ready and raring to go, and that's exactly what's going to happen. The LGs are brought to bear, but it's going to be Kula, who's just too strong. That's a wall of meat that the Galena's running into, and that's going to be another successful fight yeah. here. Again, I think... Wow, okay. These rounds, man, they're so quick. This is crazy. Kula's uh, really good at hitting those acid blobs. Like, the, he just hits all the, the spurts of acid. He's a Sword like pro, my friend. He's um, really good on the Sword like, yeah. I, I've I said I like Claws taking the initiative, but that was like a step too far. Uh, he needs to rein it in a little bit. He has obviously an amazing faith in his aim ab aiming ability, but Cool is no slouch, and you, you need to pick and choose what, which fights you're going to take. The LG doing a lot of damage here. Trying to use the Asus Spit to get an advantage in this fight, but the LG's just yeah. simply too strong, and it's you have another, to wonder. It's another fight you don't need to take. Um, it's just far too aggressive. It's high risk, high semi-high rewards, so a lot of time it's not worth to sacrifice your life for something that might not or probably won't pay off. And we have a brilliant use of the Ghost Wall Dead Claws getting in on top of Cooler. Down to 27, but the Mega's there to help him recover as he makes his way back to the Heavy. Should be spawning soon, looking to catch Cooler. And obviously, Cooler doesn't really have any weapons at the moment, so there is a lot of options here for Claws to get aggressive, or at least initially there was. But now Cooler's picked up the LG, and Claws is not in a fair engagement, moving up the stairs into it, but still, alive and kicking. Claws doesn't want to continue the engagement, a bit too uncertain to him, perhaps, as to who would win the fight. And indeed, disengage for both players to stack up once again. Yeah, so it does seem Claws has plus back bound. I was unsure at the start of this map. <laughs> Rocket in there is, once again, the pressure comes in like onto this. the next big item, using the Ghost Walk aggressively, and it's not going to pay off. Brilliant positioning there from Cooler to basically eliminate Claws' ability to surprise him. Exactly, and the... The great thing from that fight is the way Cooler turned around before the Knicks appeared. It was again that natural intuition that Quake players have where, where is my opponent? Why am I not being shot at? That must mean he is invisible. That's a brilliant position there around the Mega. It's a really hard spot though. He doesn't really have the health to commit and stand on it directly. And so he will sadly have to watch that Mega get taken away. And this is not a good situation. It caught in the doorway and an easy rocket from Claws there to finish off Cooler. I like the Galena pick um, against the, the lightweight champions. We see the totems be very effective. This is big. This is really matter. big. And there it is. Claws going to take it. Three to one. Wow, that was quick. Beautiful stuff there from Claws, showing some fire, showing some fight against just, the Russian legend. It just shows that an all-out aggressive play can work if you hit your shots. Uh, Cooler was never able to settle there. Yes, there were a few pretty dumb decisions made on Claws' side, but Cooler didn't have the time to play his game, get a few items, stack up. And, it's, and particularly true is when the saw lag was up the equation, I think that was one of the tactics of, of Claws there, just get rid of the saw lag at any cost. Once that was happened, he knew that he could push in and push in and push in because Cooler didn't have the stack to sustain any sort of a dam, uh, any sort of rush. And he never let really Cooler move off spawn. So it was, it was a showcase on how to play aggressive with a few kind of minor discrepancies where he went too aggressive.
And it's a very big contrast between the first map where we saw Kula was able to play a, yes. a style that really was suited to deal with very fast moving characters, able to get the information, play the information game, have that superiority there, exactly. play the traps. He didn't have space to do that no. on, on the. And Claws didn't let him. There, there, is, there are ways to do it on Corrupted Keep. It's obviously exceptionally difficult given the, the naturally confined nature of the map. Um, but Claws, at the end of the day, said, okay, I'm not letting you do that. I'm just going to run at you and run at you and run at you. And we've seen Razy do that, for example, when this real, nearly took Rafa out of the tournament, but essentially running at him with a sword like. Ruins of Sarnath is the last map. I think I saw it on the player's screens. Um, that is a definitely different challenge. Uh, we casted Claws on it before. And this was the map he actually struggled a little bit against Gelasak against. Against his Anarchy. It was against an anarchy, yes, and we won't see an anarchy coming no. out of Kula. <laughs> Absolutely. But we will, we will see a Sola coming out of Kula, and that in itself is obviously a massive problem because, you, again, you can utilize these corners of the map extremely well. It is more open than Blood Covenant, but at the same time, there are lots of opportunities to retreat, and particularly lots of opportunities to utilize sound cues. This map is obviously very open, and you can hear a lot more than you can on other maps, and that's definitely going to favor Kula's game, enable being able to slow it down. And if he can slow it down effectively, Claws has to adjust. If he doesn't, he's just going to be running into him once again. Yeah, I'm very curious to see what Claws' efficacy will be. You know, again, just looking at it from the perspective of this is not Blood Covenant, and that really did seem to be. I mean, would you say that that's the best map for you know the, the style that Killer wants to play against Claws? Is that is that the most optimal situation? I think most definitely. It's one of those maps where the routes these champions need to take in terms of the anarchies and the slashes is most obvious with the long rounded curves, and we saw Cooler setting up traps there every single time. What, uh, it was either on the bridge or on the curves where the time shards are. And either, either every single time, Claws was running into him because he knew that's where those champions need to go. This map isn't as set in stone. Um, and that does, again, give Claws a little bit of a lifeline. So, but on the flip side, moving off the back of just demolishing Cooler and Corrupted Keep, I can't see why Claws would want to change his game style. Yeah, I mean, the, the thing ultimately is, is it's the case that you never want to over adapt, basically. You want to have in your game plan when you're, when you're at a tournament sort of a range of adaptation that you can kind of make. You never want yep. to go too far because then you, you play too much out of your comfort zone. A lot of those decisions which are intuitive, you start having to think about pretty much every single decision all of a yep. sudden. And then you just don't play as optimally. So it's, it's definitely one of those, those sort of balances you have to strike as a professional player and something that, you know, these guys are going to have a lot of experience in doing. So I've... I, I would hope that we don't see anything you know, drastically different that they are going to be trying to play in their comfort zones. Because I think both players are incredibly strong. Yep. They're very good at their styles of play. And really, it's just going to be about who is going to be more on points here today when it really matters. Because peaking is also another skill that every professional player needs to have, peaking throughout the tournament. So we've just seen a trough on Corrupted Keep with uh, Kula. Do we think we see a peak on the final map? Like up, down, <laughs> up? Is that how it works? So for Claus, he's oh. gone trough, peak, trough. I don't know, man. You don't know? No, I don't know about these peaks and troughs. <laughs> um, I, I'm intrigued because this is also the, obviously the final round. On the first map, it's all right. You can throw, throw it away a little bit. It's the first map of a best of three. You're very confident moving into your own map. You're not, you're not obviously it's, it's not the best in the world to lose, but you know you have another chance. This is the final chance. And, this is obviously, I think this is Claus' biggest, obviously biggest tournament. And so how much is, how much is that nerves going to affect him moving into the final map of the game? And we haven't seen throughout the tournament him really take any detour from his hyper-aggressive style. So if it's not working, is there an option B? That's the biggest question I have at the moment for Claus. All right, well, looks like we are just getting the players connected back onto the server. Should be a couple minutes, I am told. So tell your family, tell your friends. You, you got time, you got a couple minutes to get their eyes on Quake champions here at Quake on 2017. It's been a remarkable tournament so far. I've had a lot of very exciting moments. I think every match in the quarterfinals have just kind of blown us, all of us away. So I've uh, been, I've been, I don't want to say pleasantly surprised, but it was, it's been amazing how every single one of these games we've seen today has pretty much gone to the wire. Is there like, a, is there a moment that sort of stands out to you? Because th there's been some, obviously, pretty clutch moments that have happened throughout sure. today. Except seeing Clutch himself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think for me... That was I a disgusting joke, by the way. Oh, thanks. I just want you, just want you to know that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That's what I like to do. Though for me, the, the defining moment was the final map, Avec, 
against Vu. Um, throughout that whole series, it was incredible the way it went back and forth. But within that map itself, there were so many dynamics that went on. It was just fascinating to see that the way in which each player changed the, the way in which they were approaching the match almost on a round by round basis, going from aggress to gr aggressive to passive to positional. There was just so many different styles coming out, so many mind games on play. I mean, it's just the rail that Rafa hit onto uh, Razy. That's really. <laughs> you're, you're simpleton, man. Like, I, I, I am, but that was, I'm that was thinking clutch, about man. the way that the, the game evolves and it's, it's got its own, like, it's got its own personality. And then you're like, yeah, that was a great shot. Cool. It's, oh, Bike on. drop moment from DDK. You wouldn't hit that shot. What are you talking about, bro? <laughs> and you pick up your LG, not your, not your clutch rails. So. I can hear a clutch rail too. I mean, why, why is it that you didn't, you didn't compete for the sex? I feel like you should have been in there. You should have thrown the gauntlet down for, for you know, the United Kingdom. I thought I'd let others have a shot. You know, Zoot, Zoot was involved. Zoot, well, he I, was involved. He was involved. What about you? I thought, I thought we'd see you here. I know, I know. And then what happened to the regionals? I failed, mate. I failed. I'm glad you actually straight up admitted it. I, that takes a big you, man. I mean, you've got, you've, got to, you've got to admit your failures. It's, really, it's actually quite... I was actually really sad because it's been a very long time since I've competed and I forgot actually how much... like how depressing it is to lose. Because you, 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 you know, you put loads of time and, and effort into it. You know, you're practicing every, you know, you're practicing every day. You're sacrificing a lot of other like social activities. You know, you're super focused on this one goal. And then, and then you've then, then you your fail. world crumbles around you. And especially you when you think that you know, you really think, every, every, and everyone's like, yeah, you should have won this. And then you got but knocked then out you by a British team as well. Uh, no, not completely British. Britain and oh yeah, they're half British actually. Yeah. Maestro, either way. Only, only a couple of Brits, but, uh, but at least at least there's that, there is that. We had yeah, some British sure. representation and moving forwards. But yeah, it's, uh, and that's the thing too, because if you look at, for example, at Inakula uh, throughout this tournament, we, we can see how much it really means to him to come back, to play, to compete at Quake, despite the fact that he's done this for decades, Yeah, basically. for me, that's been one of the, like, the most touching things is seeing every single round he's been on the stage, every single round he's won, is the actual emotion going into him. Yeah, he, he, he says nothing's been hard, it's all been easy, it is a bit of arrogance coming up, but you know, that's a bit of showmanship as well. And it just means the world to him. I mean, it also, like, watching people like Vu play, uh, you didn't see it on stage, but when he beat Kilson, like, I've got it on my phone, you're, like, cheering and screaming <laughs> and banging the table and having that picture of his family in front of him. There's a lot of emotional connections to the game because uh, it is their livelihood, it is their life, and it's also... The nice thing about this game is their passion as well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and to see that come through after all these years is just pretty amazing. I think there's, there's nothing quite like competition. You can't really replace it because you can, you can be like, oh, you know, I'm an, I'm an old man now, you know, <laughs> moving on with my life. I've got a bit grey, actually. Got to get a job and all this stuff and uh, yeah, maybe get some education. Job, you're a bit of a dosser. Um, wow. Yeah. Um, but I... It's been it's been an amazing journey. It's just great to be a part of it. Like, you know, it's kind of a feel bad man moment, I think. Yeah, and I mean, is there any player that you feel like in this tournament you expected them to do much better than they did, and then they had maybe one of those moments where it's like, oh god, they sort of just they failed in a spot where they they shouldn't uh, have, or you feel like they shouldn't have? I don't think it's that players have failed. There are a few players I would expect to go further. I think in, on the flip side, it's the opposition doing a lot better than I expected. So someone like. Vu getting to the semi-finals, beating Avec, who I had pinned down as perhaps winning the tournament based yeah. on previous experiences. Avec didn't fail. Like, yeah, he played really well. That's Avic, a really Avic was series. incredible in that series. Just uh, have to shout out to Vu because he is one of. I mean, we, we were, you know, for us who have seen him compete in the past, especially you know since the painkiller days, he's one of those players that just has just inbuilt this. This, this mindset of the champion, basically. Yeah. Like, he, his composure and focus when he's on an important match is unparalleled. And I was about to say, like, if you're an up-and-coming player, and I think he is kind of the epitome of a role model. Like, you have all these amazing players, like Kula, uh, Claws, that have natural gifts for the game. And, and Vu, obviously, is one of them. But in terms of the raw skill set, you, you wouldn't class him as the elite level. It's all in the mentality that yeah. he doesn't get phased when the pressure hits him. And that is what separates the champion. And it shows you, you don't need to be the most gifted player in the world in order to reach the highest echelons of the game. And speaking of pressure, it looks like these players are about to kick off the action once again. I saw them in the character select, and that means we're about to kick off the third and final map between Kula and Claws here at QuakeCon 2017. Which player will advance? Will it be the legend, or will it be the young, new, the new man from Belarus, Claws, as we now continue things on Ruins of Sarnath? Push your money on. Let's get into the game. Um, we have, uh, oh, we have this, this, this horror, this crazy dynamic. It's just I, these two narratives. I mean, it's so hard. It was I, a simple me, it's, question. It's, for me, it's got to be cooler, I guess. All right, in that thank sense. you. I've got to go with the, the old man, you know. I, I, I find that relatable, <laughs> you know. 
Yeah, yes, I could actually appreciate that. Um, I think my heart says claws, my head says cooler. Um, but just because... Why does your heart say claws? Just because you... Because... Uh, I love... Well, never mind. Do you know, we, have time to, we don't have time to answer this question right now. I love aggression. Right well, it's going to be... Pat's an aggressive start here. Because Kula cool, already spotting claws just diving onto him. He's only got the rockets. Oh, oh. that was so close. Very nicely timed. Uh, use of the ability there of Ghost Walk and then the re-engage from Claws. Cooler is going to feel like that was daylight robbery. It's stolen away from him and Claws will start off well. Yeah, Harry Houdini puffing through the rocket and pushing him with an aggression move here. But the great finishing move of that entire event was the fact that Cooler did not see the Ghost Walk being used aggressively. So now things will settle down somewhat as both players get some distance between one another and begin to collect all the weapons. Cooler missing that ever so powerful LG and that's something he's going to be thinking about. He's going to want to try to stick to engagements that make sense for the weapons he has for now, but he does find a clear route to pick up that LG and now he's got all the weapons he needs. He hasn't got Ghost Walk just yet. He's got to be careful. That teleporter is going to keep him out of harm arm's way for the time being, but down to 45 health means he's very vulnerable. Gets to drop the rocket. Doesn't quite connect as he'd hoped, but he does get a good idea as to where his opponent is, which is very important. And we can see on this map, Cooler obviously looking more comfortable, being able to use the sound cues, and that was obviously the key ingredient missing on Corrupted Keep. So Cooler back to the style he wants to play, nice and slow. Speaking of nice and slow, Claus is also applying the same idea, just holding off, using that high ground positioning, trying to find out that information. Nice. But he's got rails for days as Claus finishes off Cooler. Cooler was not expecting that one, and he's down to a single champion. It's Ranger against the Knicks. We said Danny in the pre-match, how was Claus going to play this match? Is he going to go full retard and just rush and rush and rush for days? But no, at the moment, it seems that he is playing calculated just as well, matching up to what Kulo is putting out. Claus, great long range rail, not even needing the zoom. That's harder than it looks. And now he's going to go off into the connector position, looking to get a finishing. Engagement perhaps, but he can't quite find Kula, so able to use his positional advantage to quickly sweep away the big items. Now he can go for the engagement. That's beautiful there. The aggressive ghost will Kula surely knows that he's got a cause hot in his heels here. And there it is, the LG finishing off Kula's last champion. And that is round one to Claws, the new blood. Perfect round. Um, this is what we wanted to see on Blood Covenant, utilizing the rail um, and then pushing in following that. And that's I think that's the way you need to play against Kula because Kula obviously wants to set up those traps. And if you're just playing the rail game, then you're not giving the opportunity. And if you're pushing in, even if he, even if he is setting up a trap, he's already low enough for you to finish him off. And if he's not, you just get in there for a clean kill, and that's perfect. Once again, we see Claws taking the high ground position, looking for the info. Great rail connected, though, onto the saw lag, finding just such a slight angle there to hit that one. Obviously, saw lag is one of the bigger champions that you can. Definitely uh, use that those big hot hitboxes to find greater accuracies, but looks like there's going to be a challenge here straight into the heavy. Sticking around is Cooler, and somehow he hits a rail, picks up the heavy, and again, the stack of the sword, like, so, so useful, but he's going to run into Claws straight off the spawn. He just picked up an LG, and that's very unfortunate for Cooler. Yeah, I think... Moving in here, I think Cooler rocket jumped out of the red in order to try and not force that spawn. He knew it was a possibility, and if he got close to it, then there was a chance he might have denied it and tried, or at least got there when Claus was getting the lightning gun, and then he could pressure him subsequently. Either way, it didn't pay out. Claus got the, the lightning gun first. And oh, using those rockets, it's a great effect from above, and Claus is sticking around perhaps for a little bit too long, and it's, it's a great uh, great point about controlling the weapons here. And speaking of which, there's no time really to talk about that yeah. one. Get a very nice little smile there from Cooler as he knows what just happened. Claws now down to just the anarchy. Yeah, and that, that, that other frag. Great rail wow. connected there, but it's not enough. In. Claws, yeah. great finishing blow there, 2-0 for him. That cheeky laugh, I think, was him laughing a little bit at the game because after that kill, he stood and waited at the lightning gun side uh, until he saw Claw spawned. And again, I think he, because he was low on the Knicks without the Ghost Walker, I think he was saying, please don't spawn here, please don't spawn here, and utilizing his position to try and not force it. And Claws still managed to spawn right behind him. Kula has a great spawn here into this, this round. And of course, Claws only needs a single more round win. And he is going to move forwards 
QuakeCon 2017. The stakes are high. They couldn't be higher. The pressure surely will start to seep in now as Claws is close. Kula has an advantage on the weaponry. Trying to play off with this. The LG damage coming in. The rockets, though, quite amazing, in fact. And Kula, he's in a lot of trouble right now. We've got the aggressive Ghost Wall coming in. Can Claws finish him off? Yes, he can. Rockets will be the weapon to finish wow. off Kula. And that's one champion down. This is incredible. Claws is two kills away from taking out Kula from QuakeCon, meaning he might be limited to another third place. Claws. Here it is. Looks like an aggressive move coming in from Kula straight for the telly. And the Rock is... Whoa. Oh! He's going to somehow get it. I don't even know how he could pull the trigger in time for that last one. Picks up the kill. That's massive there to take Kula down. Everything now rests upon this last champion for Kula. The Ranger, can he make it work? The aggression comes in, the LG is good here for Claws. He knows he's over the back. Right. And there GG. it is! Cooler is out, Claws somehow makes it work. A quick 3-0 sweep into the finals. Beautiful stuff there from Claws. The and start of something new. Claws doesn't even look faced. That final map was just so easy. So, so easy. And it's not like Claws had some Magical tactic, he just played extremely well. He hit the shots he needed to hit, and he didn't overcommit until he hit them. It was a simple style, and Kool just had nothing, no response. It's not like Kool played badly whatsoever. He just didn't match up to Claws on this day. And uh, what, a, what an amazing moment there for Claws to, to actually pull that out of the back. You can, you can see, I don't even think that he knows how to feel right now because the journey's not yet over. And that's, that's, that's one thing as well. You don't want to sort of overstep it with the emotions here. You've got to stay composed because it's, I mean, he has a great chance to take, take it all. This is probably the most gifted up-and-coming Quake player today, and he's shown that he has the championship material. Absolutely, I'm so excited. And now it's uh, time to throw it back to the desk to see their thoughts. What did you guys make of that one? Uh, yeah, uh, well, we have our first finalist, Claus, of course, but I want to reference something that you guys said early on during game one, where you said, you know, if Claus just kind of turn things down a little bit, but just kind of like played his game a little bit more, um, which I don't think Cooler let him do in that first game. I think Cooler played Cooler's game and he tried to adapt. But then in game two, in game three, I feel like Claus did exactly what he needed to do. He slowed it down a little bit. I feel like Claus was getting used to stage as well at the beginning. This is the first time international presence, being on the big stage, a lot of people watching you. Uh, and after that first map, I think the nerves started to unravel a little bit, and he seemed absolutely fine. He was hitting harder. He says he hits harder than Tox, and I think he hits harder than Tox. There was some amazing rails that came up from him. His LG was on point. We saw Same. some of the smirks come from Cooler, like, a, yep, you you know, that was good, or that shocked me, you got me. Uh, he had that last, uh, that one hit machine gun kill at the end there to kind of take that uh, second round of the third map. Uh, Vic, I want to hear from you. Uh, you know, a champion's taken down, Cooler. He is going to be competing in the third and fourth place spot. Uh, but Claws, we got some new blood in the finals. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, man, to be 19 and you see that hit scan aim, it makes you think, you know, I know Cooler's been around and we talked about tournament experience. Um, and you seem to see that in the first map. Because uh, I felt Claus kind of was rushing it a little bit. We were, like, as, as I mentioned, we were talking. Mm -hmm. I said, hey, I think he needs to just to slow it down a tad. Because um, Cooler was setting some good traps for him. And then uh, Claus really got things going in the second map. Really got into his groove and uh, ran with it from there. And yeah, you got to give credit, man. This kid, what a killer. That that lightning gun of his. I mean, there were some things. Where, right. I mean, we were all it watching it. He was making Vic jealous, uh, was, for sure. Yeah, oh, man, <laughs> it was totally making me jealous. Let's take a look at the brackets now that we have our first finalists uh, set for the grand stage here at the Quake World Championships. Claws is going to make it in a 2-1 victory over Cooler. Of course, that sets us up for another semifinal. And you said something earlier, Vic. No matter what, we've got an old blood versus new blood final. Vu and Dehang, both definitely veteran players, uh, have played multiple iterations of Quake, and they get to go up, one of them, up against the new blood claws. And it's, I mean, this is what we wanted here at the Quake World Championships. Very scary. I think we've seen a lot of really intelligent players from many different players throughout the tournament so far. Of course, his incredible aim, clauses that yeah. is, has been just you know unparalleled this tournament, in my opinion. But I've got to say, the way he picks the fights that he wants and the way that he spots those weaknesses in the, the armor of Cooler, I think it was crazy. We, I was not expecting to see such high-level play from Claws. It was unbelievable. Yep, well, we've got Red Eye on standby with Claws. Let's hear how he feels after that victory that takes him to the finals. Red Eye? Uh, thank you very much, Marcus. Yes, Claws, well done. Thank you. Thank you. 
you are a QuakeCon grand finalist right now at the Quake World Championship. So tell me what that means to you. I mean, that's actually cool, but uh, I really want to win, so I, yeah, it's hard to say, man. I will be really happy only when I will win this. And this one, this game, I will take only like as a small step to the victory. Okay, that's a very professional approach. Does that kind of explain why at the end of the match you kind of looked not that happy? Because <laughs> I was thinking, wow, he doesn't look that happy. I mean, I was just serious and that's it. Yeah. Like, I don't know, man. I was actually happy inside because, I mean, I don't know, man. You just beat Cooler in the semi-final at QuakeCon. That we get, I mean, I got what I deserve, so that's it. Okay, um, you told me that you haven't really practiced that much before the EU qualifiers. What have you done since then? I mean, we were practicing only sacrifice, and at the beginning, Duel feel, felt only, like, Duels in this game feel a bit uh, random for people, but for me, Duel feels like the who is smarter, he will actually win. So, of course, people say, like, some random shit happens to them, but, I mean, it, does, it just happens to you because you cannot predict it, and that's it. So I felt, I felt like I'm good enough to do it even without practice. Okay, I love that confidence. Uh, in terms of the match, how did it go from your point of view? Because the first game, I, you know, I sat there and watched you and I thought, oh, maybe he's a bit nervous. But you said to me, you weren't nervous. It was just Caller's style of play on that first map sort of frustrated you a bit. Yeah, first game is, was like, it was like small warm-up, but I also needed to get used to his style because he was camping a lot and it's just very hard for me to do something. Is that partly why you love running at players with the LG so much? Yeah, because in Sacrifice I can get enough of it, and there I just can abuse it, because I'm pretty confident and... I don't know, man. Easy. Okay, good, good way to end. Uh, Claus, well done. You are in the QuakeCon Championship Final tomorrow. We've still got more semi-final, of course, and that's coming up after the break. America's very own Dehang goes head-to-head -head with the European that he wanted to face.